Hey there, a quick note. This show, it sounds like I'm recording the show inside a tin can. And there's a couple of reasons for that. I now know what I did wrong. Nicole sounds great. I sound like I'm talking in a tin can. So please bear with us because the content is worth listening to. All right, here we go. everyone. Thanks for downloading the show. You have Garden Fork Radio in your ears right now. My name is Eric. I have this DIY podcast and a companion YouTube channel. I talk about what I think and I hope you think are interesting things with my friends and my friend today is Nicole. Welcome, Nicole. Hey, so excited to be here. So full disclosure, Nicole is is way ahead of the curve of technology wise so we're all recording this on nicole's computer and not mine <laughs> <laughs> we're trying new things we're trying a software called zencaster and um because this the skype and the can't call recorder thing they work pretty good but the zencaster and there's another one called squadcast have um video capabilities and we're looking into that so um but because my dog got sick all over the kitchen floor, we're not doing video right now. <laughs> <laughs> Long story. <laughs> but anyway, um, so this is very cool, Nicole, because you, like a couple people who've been on the show, we have this kind of, we've had this email back and forth going on forever. Yeah. And then I was just like, well, why don't you just come on the show, you know? You know, I've thought about emailing you to be on the show before, but then I always he- hear like, oh, Nicole, you know, somebody's yelling at the the computer and I'm like, oh, it's me. I'm yelling at you right now. <laughs> Let me just send the email right now. <laughs> yeah, it's radio at gardenfork.tv. If you, if you have uh, some interesting topics you want to share with everyone, because I kind of look at the podcast as we're, we're like a, talk interview show on a stage with a 1200 person audience um you know i i came to garden fork through the podcast right because you were with west coast eric and um that's totally how i found you oh neat i never even watched the videos there's a lot of propagation through um what i call peer-to-peer recommendation and eric is over at root simple um and we I've been on his podcast. He's been on mine. He's making these, uh, um, it's like mission style furniture. He's doing a deep dive on that. So we got to get him back on the show. Oh yeah, totally. That would be fascinating. I can't, I don't have the, I don't have the patience for that. (laughs) Well, that's an interesting, you bring up a good point though, with respect to DIY. I like a DIY project that I can get done that day. Like the the multiple days, it's, it's, it's too much for me. Oh, I'm running into that problem right now. Oh, yeah. What are you working on? There's about six half done videos. Um, and part of it, I, I I built a new raised bed and I, I tried to make it really simple. So I just used rebar to put it together and I made a video. And I want to do a follow up video about that. And I just I just started it and then I just couldn't finish. I get lost in my own mind a lot. <laughs> Don't we all? Um, and then I just kind of melt into the floor. We're all getting lost in your mind. Look, I've listened to almost the whole back catalog of Garden Fork. Wow. Yeah. And I appreciate that you haven't taken it down. So many places take it down. Oh yeah. You know, there's a lot of, um, there's some embarrassing moments there. (laughs) No, no, no. It's all good. It's all good. Um, well, speaking of embarrassing moments, I'm going to tell you about going to the rock quarry. So I have this backyard um, and I decided to, instead of growing things this summer, I'm not growing anything. Oh, I'm growing basil. Okay. Oh, but as far I as just, a vegetable garden. Yeah. No more. Yeah. It was like rocks. And you we, we put the like container gardens on it last year when we were worried we were not going to have enough food. And we, you know, somebody put like, you know, I spent $150 raising my 25 cent tomato and that's exactly like what happened to me. So that's fine. I'm not doing that this year. So I have cute chairs and I have a table so I can sit back there and enjoy it. But, you know, you sit there and you notice the weeds. So I get rid of the reeds in my rock garden and then I realize I need more rocks. The children have come and played with the rocks and they're an attractive nuisance. Every child that comes to my house wants to play with these rocks. They're little river stone pebbles. 
Right. So last week I go on this epic, I wake up and I'm like, I'm, I'm finding these rocks. I'm getting these rocks. So I go to a, a rock place ne- near my house that my friend used. And the guy was super nice. He's like, yeah, we've got beige rocks. You need blue rocks. And I was like, okay, great. Where do I find those? He's like, go to this garden center. So I go to the garden center. Again, it's like 730 in the morning because I'm like, yeah. I'm getting this done. All right. This will happen today. So I get to the garden center and the guy is a total like he's just rude to me. And he's like, yeah, those are number two bluestone. And I was like, okay, do you have any? And he's like, no, I don't have any. And I was like, well, where would you find them? He's like someplace like Bethesda. And Bethesda is like the opposite side of DC from where we live. And it's like a ritzier area. And it was clearly uh, like lady if they're bluestone. <laughs> So I was like, fine, whatever. I'm a little bit demoralized. I get in my car, I go home and I like, I pull myself together and I use Google and it turns out <laughs> there's a rock quarry outside of Bethesda, just outside the beltway in DC. And I call the kid there. And of course, anybody who's younger than me now that I'm 46 as a kid and the guy's really nice. And he's like, yeah, just come into the quarry, go to the left, go up the hill, go past the mulch. And you'll see the blue stones we have. If you like those blue stones, drive down the hill. And, you know, and I was like, well, what do I bring? My brother says I'm supposed to bring buckets. My brother lives in Idaho. But I don't have any buckets. I'm not bringing buckets. I don't own any buckets. I got rid of all buckets. Anyway, so I was like, you know, what what am I supposed to put the blue stones in? He's like, oh, well, we can get a backhoe and just dump them in the back of your truck. And I was like, no, no. You're not understanding what kind of rocks. Like, no, that's not what we're doing here. Um, And he's like, oh, I was like, should I bring an Ikea bag (laughs) to put my rocks in? And he's like, well, you can bring the Ikea bag, but then you'll have to weigh them. And I was like, okay, well, what what are my options here? And he he kindly tells me he's got bags that'll hold 80 pounds of rock. Yep. So I've done a lot of research about these rocks, and I was about to buy them on Amazon Uh. for $40 a bag. And again, the brother in Idaho, John, is like, no, Nicole, no, that's way too expensive for rocks. And, you know, I I just was like, I want this project done. I'm tired of dealing with the rocks. (laughs) So this, I was like, well, what are we talking? How much is it for an 80 pound bag? Do you want to guess how much it is? $3. Yeah, $2.25. And I was like, well, (laughs) once I fill up an 80 pound bag of rocks, I'm not going to be able to move that bag. (laughs) What do I do then? He's like, well, maybe somebody can help you put them in the back of your car. And I was like, okay, at two twenty-five a bag. I'm just going to buy twice as many bags. I can lift up a forty-pound bag of rocks. <laughs> so, wow, this is amazing. Oh my god! So there, I get there, and there's these giant trucks. I mean, this is like they're like this is a real quarry. <laughs> Yeah, they got big payloaders and big dump trucks. Yeah, and people are moving around. You just kind of like need to like assertively drive yourself through this thing. And so, you know, I'm like, like, you know what you're doing. Basically, yeah, I'm like the, you know, the middle aged lady with the, can I borrow a shovel? (laughs) So um, I use my shovel and I've got my like running skirt on. I'm the only woman clearly for a very long while. That's fine. I get my, you know, five bags of dirt and I get him in. Uh, um, driving down that hill though was really scary and the guy told me that um, people freeze up and have panic attacks when they come if they don't know what they're doing which I yeah. thought was interesting so um, you know well I have some thoughts on this is this is the story over or is there a- yeah I know I got the rocks and then I ended up finding my dolly and I dollied them to the back of course I didn't get enough never ever buy di- double the rocks you need always buy double the rocks <laughs> so I've got to go back so here's here's the biggest expense when it comes to buying rocks is transporting them from a quarry to the retail store oh that makes a lot of sense They're yeah heavy. I mean, it's, um, so a buddy of mine has a, uh, what's the little Ford pickup truck? It's the, it's the tiny one. It's the oh, Ford. Like a, oh, I was thinking of like a Chevy S10, but like a right, Ford. Right, same thing. Yeah, whatever, same well, thing. He's, so he's got that size truck and he needed sand for his garden. So he drove down to the quarry. There's two quarries near our town in Connecticut. And, you know, they put a, a backhoe uh, front end loader scoop in his the back of his truck. And he goes into the trailer to pay for it, 
and he pulled out his debit card and they're like, the debit card costs us more in transaction than the cost of the sand. Oh my God. They said, just, just keep the sand. <laughs> and he, so he got a free load of sand because of the hassle of processing his debit card transaction. That's hilarious. And it's, well, it's all about just kind of taking ownership of, Hey, I'm here. I need this thing. And the Corey guys are great. Usually. Yeah. They, he was so nice. He was really helpful. And it doesn't um, hurt to tip them. Yeah. I mean, I would, any person who would have like helped me with a <laughs> shoveling my rocks, I would have helped them. I would have tipped them. They, um, so that's the thing is I, um, I actually got rid of my, um, pickup truck because it was just kind of this giant thing in my driveway, you know, uh-huh. 12 months out of the year. And I would use it once a month. And so I right. got rid of it, but now I'm thinking, you know, it'd be handy to have a truck. Cause like, I need some garden soil right now. And I'm like, you know, how to, just the logistics of Do that. I want it costs more to have it delivered than to buy it. Right. The mulch, right? Like we can go down to DC has this great mulch program and they'll just put it in the, you know, you can just put it in the back of your car or whatever, put it in the back of your truck and it's free. Yeah. But, um, you know, that's the kind of thing you need to share. Like I, so I have a good friend, her husband is actually like a, a master construction worker or whatever, um, foreman or whatever they're called anyway. Um, and they have all these, all of these tools. And so like I, this summer I decided, or during the COVID that, um, the kids need, we needed to build something together. So we built a playhouse, a modular playhouse from this book called home building from children. Huh? circa 1972. Ah. Um, it was really cute. It was modular. It was way more work than I expected. But what was great was she just, she's like, why, why would you go buy like a jigsaw? We have one. We're like, my husband's not using it. Like just borrow it. Yep. So I'm a little nervous about borrowing people's tools. Cause you know, I'm like, well, I'll just buy you a new one. If it breaks, if I break it, like, yeah, I had a friend of mine burn out my belt sander and then he just returned the burnt out belt sander. Oh, are you still friends? Yeah, but I'm like, you know, that's it's only a forty dollar sander. You know, so it's, it's an inexpensive brand from a, a one of the the, the blue or orange. Right. Store, remember? Why, like, you know, that's that's less than the cost of a dinner. <laughs> right. Come on, throw me a bone here. But the the whole thing about the tool thing, um, actually, in a video I'm making right now about putting mulch between my garden beds, um, I own. A, tra- a front end, I have backhoe front end loader tractor. Right. It's a little one. Yeah. Um, we talked about in the podcast, we bought a big one and that was a mistake. And then we ended up buying. Um, so me and a buddy of mine, um, we, we bought the thing together and as separately, if we had bought it, they're, they're quite expensive, but buying half a tractor was much more approachable for me. You and need it was a half a truck. Tractor. You need half a truck. Yeah. So maybe that's in my future. Well, um, oh, you know what Eric, West Coast Eric brought up, which I've brought up to my the DC library, is that the LA Public Library has a lending yes. library of tools. And so he that's where he got his uh, kilowatt. Oh, the kilowatt meter to measure your yeah. electric usage? Yeah, to see what was sucking up the, you know, what was sucking up the electricity. Um, DC doesn't have that. But I think that's such a great thing that, like, communities can so easily do. I, I just don't know, like, why aren't we sharing I, uh, more? In my group of friends, I'm the, I'm the one with the most tools. Right. So the people come to you all the time. You need the lending library. Right. But then, like, my one friend is a amazing chef, you know. Right. And my other friend um, has every computer part or computer cable you'd ever need from the last 40 years. You know, <laughs> that's my husband. You know, like I needed to hook up a monitor for my wife. I needed a, a VGA to HDMI cable. And I'm like, you got one of these? He goes, oh, yeah. You know, so I just, he just gave it to me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's so awesome. I love it. But there is that sense of community that I think people, I don't, I, I do know, I've heard of towns or communities that formalize it. I mean, I think with a lot of people, if there's an informal relationship there. Well, this segues nicely into my discussion about how I use Facebook. Yes. By the way, we, everyone listening, Nicole sent a whole list of things to talk about, and I'm just the bongo player here. So. 
<laughs> okay. So I, I don't know, a couple of years ago, realized that Facebook was sucking the life out of me. Right. Yeah. But I use it for my photography business. I'm a photographer and I use it. I run this gigantic um, DC family biking Facebook page where they're family bikers and we share about family biking. I've got a big bike like Eric's. Um, I don't have the rad. I don't have the rad power. I have a, a, a Yuba El Mundo. Oh, nice. but, um, I love that thing. So anyway, I started that a couple of years ago, but I, so I didn't want to like stop Facebook, but I also didn't want to have that horrible feeling. Yes. So I hid everybody. I hid all of my friends. Oh. I have every person I know, like I'll friend somebody. And then as soon as we're friends, I like, you can click hide. Don't see anything from this friend. So <laughs> when I go to Facebook, it says, welcome to Facebook. You can find friends. Really? Yeah. The algorithm, like the, the Facebook doesn't like whatever. It just says that it's like, Oh, look for some friends. You can get some friends. Um, so I don't have anything. I don't have that, that horrible, like scrolling of death that you yes. get when you get into Facebook. But so I use it more targeted. So I go to my DC family biking page, you know, I go to garden Fork, check that out. Um, and in DC, and I'm sure where you are too, there's a whole bunch of these all free websites where people or Facebook groups where people give stuff away. Yes. So um, I use that quite a bit to get rid of stuff. You know, the KonMari thing, always trying to like move stuff along that I'm not using. Um, but that has made, I, I, it made me feel like I had taken control of Facebook. Does that make sense? That's amazing because yeah, I... I use Facebook for the Garden Fork group and the Garden Fork Facebook page, and that's it. But yet, when I log in, it takes me to this news feed of dread. Yeah, you know? no. I got no time for that. Got no oh, time for that. Brilliant. So that's I highly brilliant. recommend doing that. Just get rid of it. But also, we do the our community, like our neighborhood, shares a lot of tools and stuff. Like I just got um, a free lawnmower today. Oh wow. It's a little black and decker electric lawnmower and it's broken. And I'm like an electric lawnmower. This is not going to be hard to fix. I can do no. this. Yeah. So um, it'll be my second one. The first one I fixed was a, a gas power. No, it was electric one too. It was a green green works one. And I gave that to a, we don't cut our own grass. <laughs> we have kind of a big lot. And my husband was like, when we bought this house, he was like, He's not an out. He's not. I, I'm the doer in the group. Okay. So really? like if anybody was cutting the grass, it's going to be me. And Brent's like, I'm never cutting grass. I hated cutting grass as a kid. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> so wow. we pay a neighbor to cut our grass. So <laughs> just got a free lawnmower to fix to give away. So I'm, I'm thinking, is it a corded lawnmower or cordless? It is corded. If it was cordless, I might be tempted to keep it. I, um, bet, it's, I bet it's just a, a wiring thing. Oh yeah, it's like it's got to be like I even started watching the YouTube videos. I think it's a you know it could be the starter, right? The button, the switch. Yeah. It could be yeah. There's just a couple couple things. Um, or but the dead I did, man, the dead. I call it the dead man. That you have to you hold the little handle. If you let go of the handle, the, the mower stops running. Oh, and is that just a cable? Yeah, it's a switch and a cable. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean. It's not going to be hard to fix. I did think of you. My sister lost power. She lives in uh, Washington. All my family lives out west. Um, and uh, she got her generator out and wouldn't start. And I was like, oh, did you put the... I even know what the, what you call it. I even yeah, like knew... I was like, did you put the stabilizer in it before you put it away last time? <laughs> like, I know something about generators. <laughs> I know what Eric said. You got to put the stabilizer in. Otherwise, it won't start. Whatever you're using. Whatever engine thing you have. Yeah, you should also just run it once a month because um, you can – There, water can also c accumulate in the fuel system. So you could use sea foam as well. And right. What I found – a big thing I found I, – I won't name the person by name, but they have um, a very nice generator, and they were leaving it out in the yard. And Ooh. I'm like, you mm. can't do that. No. Well, it's a piece of electronic equipment, you know, you have to yeah. be kept at least in the garage. So, well, I thought of you this morning, um, apparently FEMA and the Consumer Pro Product Safety Commission, CPSC, anyway, they're doing a big push on um, more people die from carbon monoxide poisoning after 
you know, these events that are then are dying in like hurricanes. So yep. they're trying to like really up people's awareness. Right? Yeah, people fire them up in their basement or in their garage. And it's amazing um, how much air your house will suck in from the garage door. Do the garage door, like it's usually in your kitchen or something. Right. And um, I, I discovered this with my, I have an oil fired furnace in my basement and I have an exposed basement. So there's a door to the outside. And then when the, when the furnace starts up one day, I was standing next to the exterior door and I was amazed at how much air came in through that door. Oh yeah. And I'm like, Oh wow. If the generator are right here, just even outside the door, I was like, holy cow. So that's the same in a, in a garage. Yeah, they said not even to put it in like an open, you know, like a, like an open garage that has like just a roof. Yep. Not even like, and I was like, oh, well, that's pretty important. I, um, I park it just outside the garage. And um, if it rains, I fashion a piece of plywood um, just to keep the rain off it. Oh, yeah. Right. I mean, I guess you could just put a, a tarp over it. Worst case scenario now. Or would it get hot? It's, um, it, I'm sorry. <laughs> the phone is going off. Oh, uh, is something happening? You can. There's a, there's a plumbing drama with my friend and I jammed my toe on the sidewalk this morning and one of my toes is completely purple <gasps> and I can't <laughs> kneel down. I can walk, but I, I can kind of walk and I can't kneel down and my friend is having a plumbing emergency right now and I'm like, I can't help you. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> my toe turned purple. I was like, oh. Did you break your toe? You broke your toe. I mean, if I go to the doctor, they're just going to say, yeah, you broke your toe. I mean, I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> but still, it's like, oh gosh. <laughs> yeah. It was just, you know, how the sidewalks can sometimes have a bit of a lip. Right. Right. You know? So, oh my God. Oh but anyway, my God. I love, I love this idea of just dialing back the Facebook thing and then, but using it for free, like the free stuff. Yeah. yeah instead right? of the landfill, you know, I, I hate that when the stuff goes to the landfill, it just kills me. Yeah. <laughs> like I can fix that. I can fix anything. After my grandmother died, she died about three years ago. Um, I just went on this fixing binge. Like I would like anytime you have like a broken Roomba, I can fix a Roomba. Like you wouldn't believe very good at Roombas. I, uh, yeah. Yeah. I love them. I have, I have one and it's, it's amazing after I vacuum what it will find. Cause then I run the, I run the Roomba and it just fix, it gets in all the corners and stuff. I know it's so good. I mean, honestly, it just makes me feel like so productive when I'm up here, like trying to write, but the Roomba's going, it's like, but I'm, I'm at least I'm rooming. It's Eric, your Garden Fork Radio host. <laughs> who else Who else would do this? <laughs> anyway, I uh, just wanted to say thank you to some new patrons. Um, Carrie, Katie, Natalie, and Mike P. Thank all of you for signing up. You now uh, get very interesting emails or notifications on your phone if you're using a Patreon app. Today, I posted about my seed potato procrastination very exciting <laughs> if you want to be into that kind of thing there's more information in the show notes here or go to patreon.com slash garden fork think about it, it's like a coffee cup a cup of coffee a month for garden fork helps us keep the lights on here all right thank you so there's two different book talk topics we can talk about you have written a book you're working on another book and then you started a book club online oh yeah 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 yeah. so yeah i'm a writer i wrote a book about my childhood growing up in montana with a pilot father and a and my mom and um that's called tilting a memoir it's about uh three years old um and then i'm working on a true life novel is what i'm calling it about my grandmother who um she lived to 94 and she was just quite quite the lady i mean aren't people who lived in 94 interesting all of them so yeah. um but it turns out her second husband my grandfather embezzled millions of dollars from the state of illinois oops 
um, in the fifties. And so, um, yeah. So anyway, I'm, you know, weaving that in and she grew up in a children's home and it was, you know, she lived in interesting times. Right. Um, so, but I, you know, I've always wanted to, I've always wanted to be at a book club and nobody ever invites me. (laughs) I no, that's not true. I got invited once to a book club (laughs) and I think I offended them. Uh So (laughs) I didn't get invited back anyway. So the point of the matter is, is like, I'm going to start my own fine book club. Fine people. And so I'll invite my friends. And so it's been really fun. I have a, um, I have not surprising to anybody. I have a newsletter. Um, that's just for my friends and family. And so I put it out to them. Hey, I'm starting a, a, you know, a book club. I'm going to pick the books. (laughs) (laughs) This isn't a, this is not a, this is not a democracy. (laughs) So you can read the book I pick or not. Wow. So it turns out like 20 people wrote back and were like, yeah, I'll join your book club. So the first book we read was, oh gosh, of course now I just like flew out of my brain. But the second one we read was the graphic novel of Sapiens. Wow. Um, have you heard of this book? No, but I love graphic novels. Okay, I do too. So um, Sapiens is this book that basically tries to explain like the different kinds of like how we we became who we are as homo sapiens. Okay. So, you know, prior to 70,000 years ago, there was homo Neanderthal and there were all these other homo Siberius, it turns out from Siberia. And then the little pygmies that are from Indonesia. Um, and what happened 70,000 years ago that made it switch so that we became the dominant species. It was totally fascinating. Um, and it's done in a graphic way. Yeah, this was, so he wrote a real big book and then they turned it into a graphic novel. Um, I think uh, maybe some stuff was, I know a lot of stuff was lost in the graphic novel. It wasn't my favorite graphic novel, but it was fun to try a graphic novel and um, in the, in the book club. So people really enjoyed that. Um, I listen to a lot of books. I use um, Scribd. Do you know what that is? Yes. So I have one large complaint with Scribd (laughs) and that's that it keeps throttling me. It's supposed to be unlimited books, right? Unlimited graphic, uh, unlimited audio books and eBooks, but they keep throttling my audio books. Huh? I know. Just tell me your thought. Just don't say it's unlimited. Just say it's, you know, you can listen to a lot of audio books, just not all of them every month. (laughs) So anyway, um, so I want to listen to script. I want to listen to um, Sapiens. And then the other, the book this month is by Lauren Howe, um, Leaving Isn't the Hardest Thing. And that was excellent. She grew up in um, a cult and then joined the military and realized she had joined another cult. Oops. <laughs> yeah, oops. <laughs> oh, I can hear Rick now. Um, and then <laughs> yelling at the, yelling at the podcast. Um yeah. Anyway, that was a great book. So we're, the, we're doing the book clubs once a month. So I'm excited about that. I like the idea of the leader setting, picking the book, which is like Oprah's book club. Oh yeah. I'm like Oprah. <laughs> you are. You totally are. <laughs> you just you make stuff happen, you know? Hmm. Well, so, it, it's, it's the garden fork mantra. <laughs> Done is good. <laughs> the, yeah. um, on the last video I did, I called the raised bed. I called it a super simple raised bed. And then one of the one of my viewers in a comment said that should be on one of your new T-shirts. Super simple. Oh yeah, I like that. That could be a hashtag. Yeah. Because I just don't like complicated things. <laughs> no, it just like it goes back to the like the one day project. Like, can I get it done in a day? Yeah, that's you know it's it kind of boils down to simplification. Mm-hmm. And um, mm. I, I'm kind of shying away from the more complicated things these days. Speaking of excellent graphic novels that I've recently read, uh, Marie Conmari did a life-changing magic of tidying up graphic novel. And it was oh, wow. super cute. Yeah. And it re-energized me. I mean, I read her book like, God, I don't know, was it 10 years ago now? Yeah. But then um, reading the little graphic novel was... Uh, It reinvigorated me. I was like, okay, yeah, I need to do this again. I'm getting too much stuff. Like, let go. 
You'll be happier. Does it bring me joy? Yeah. I, um, I actually just was looking at some drain pipe in my basement, which is up in the, 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 the floor joists of the first floor. And it's been there for 15 years. And I'm like, I'm never going to use this drain pipe. <laughs> so. Somebody else could really use it, right? So just let it go. And I feel so good when it goes, you know? Well, I, you know, it's so nice up in the country. You just put free on stuff and put it on the side of the road. Um, and that's why I, I prefer in the city to use these Facebook groups because like I put some free stuff just out on our little free library uh -huh. and these like teenage kids came along and it was like, I don't know, they like ruined it. And I was like, people, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Around here uh, in the city there, we have an email list for our block. We, oh yeah. We use a Google email list and a lot of stuff goes like someone had an older television and this uh, young person was going off to college, got a free TV, you know? Perfect. Like, win, win, perfect. win. So our last topic is a burning stump. Okay. I saw that this morning and I was like, Eric's got to make a video of this with the, your saw. Yes. It's, um, I've seen a couple different, you, you can actually buy these at the home improvement stores. Oh, it, really? Well, it's a piece of log and they've sliced, they've cut slices into it. And sometimes they pour wax and sawdust in them and then okay. it has a wick and you light it up and it'll, it'll burn. But, um, I don't have any stumps in my yard, but we could do it with a log, you know, like a cut piece of birch or something and show people how to make a, instead of building a fire pit, if you just wanted a burning log for one night. Um, See, that's what I was thinking would be great. Like, especially in the city, just like. You know, we've got the chairs out there. I don't like the fire pit seems like a lot of effort. I mean, I, I have it in the basement again. I haven't used it. <laughs> um, we have a theoretical fire pit. <laughs> but just just dropping a log there and setting it on fire. And then when you're done, you could just take the watering can and douse it with water and you're done. Right. I mean, it looks like do you think it would be enough fire to like make up? Because really what we want the fire for is s'mores. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's plenty of heat there for that. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I would totally, um, I would totally do that. Huh. Yeah. They have them at Home Depot or whatever. That's interesting. I think I, or I've seen them at Tractor Supply. Okay. Um, if you have a, a birch tree that's been cut down, you could cut, birch burns really easily. Um, okay. It's a real light wood. And then you could, you can use a sawzall, you know, a reciprocating saw if you want to cut across and, you know, like a cross pattern. Right. Cross cuts in it and pour, pour wax and sawdust in there. Well, um, you remind me in Girl Scouts, we would make those fire starters. So you yes. would take cardboard, wrap it with some twine and then dip it in paraffin. Yeah. 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 I actually have a video about that. We, I, we, it was kind of funny cause that video is probably five years old, but I, I put cardboard in a tuna can, like a metal tuna oh, yeah. can. And then melted wax into it. It's called, and some people would call it a buddy burner. Oh yeah, okay. I used it, and then I used a coffee can as like a little fry pan, and so when we cooked an egg. But I was just kind of a throwback to my childhood, where we would, in our backyard, we built. Well, fire. Remember when um, West Coast Eric got into like cooking in the ground? Yep. That's another fun thing to do to like throw back. But then. I thought about doing that with the kids. You know, we're always looking for stuff to do with the kids, but then I have to like dig up the ground and, and you know, I don't want anything to happen to my grass. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, can we find out the status of the canoe that you were rehabbing? Yes. Um, the new pieces are on my garage floor. Okay. It's finally warm enough now that I can work on it because I, I started to work on it and then it just got too cold because glue right. or polyurethane glue um, or resins uh, won't cure basically under about, uh, under about 65, 70 degrees. But what I have done this winter is I found a two different methods of waterproofing wood or styrofoam boats. And the, if you have a plywood boat, you essentially dilute, type bond three glue, which is a waterproof wood glue. Okay. And you cut it like one to two. So one part water, the two parts glue, and you roll it on with a paint roller or a brush. 
and supposedly it will waterproof plywood. Really? The, the guy that espouses this has a website built with like AOL 1.0 or something. You know, it's that kind of website. With yes, that. I love it. Those are the best, though, because they're real information. Yes, it's true. It's passion. It's a true passion right. project. And he keeps updating it, you know. <laughs> and so he makes, um, they're called Mouse Boats. It's a design by Gavin Atkin, uh, and Minnie Mouse and Micro Mouse and Mouse Boats. They're, they're boats that kids can make, and they're real easy. And he has applied this waterproof glue to them. And the, supposedly last year, so I'm, I'm curious to try that. The other process is a kind of a tangent to that and that you go to the Goodwill store or the thrift store and buy old bed sheets. Okay. And you you have a, either a wooden form or a styrofoam form. You can make ki- you can make a kayak out of styrofoam sheets, that, poly, that two-inch polystyrene that you use to insulate uh, basement walls. Okay. And it's called um, a hack kayak. And you, you basically use a hacksaw blade. You stack like six layers of these polystyrene sheets, and then you start carving your kayak. And the oh. styrofoam cuts away really easily with a hacksaw blade. And the guy has a hacksaw blade that he's wrapped duct tape around. So it looks like a prison shiv, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like. And then. So you smooth that and then you coat either the wood or styrofoam again with the type on three that's diluted to make it rollable or paintable. And then you lay on there the bed sheet. Okay. And then you can either paint the bed sheet with latex paint or put on more type on three glue and then latex paint. Cause latex paint is liquid rubber. Right. Okay. And it looks phenomenal. There's a couple of videos on YouTube, you know, real passion project. You know, guys, guys are with a cell phone, you know, so it's like they're not, they're not trying to get views. They just want to share their idea, you know. Right, right. And you have to pull it kind of tight. You sometimes cut little creases in the cloth. But considering how expensive uh, fiberglass resin is and fiberglass cloths, plus unless you get the low VOC stuff that it's the smell is it's just really inducing. Yeah. I, um, years ago I used to work for a government agency called GAO and one report I did was about nanotechnology and the only nanotechnology that they've found to be carcinogenic is the inhaled nanotech. And so, um, pro tip here, don't use the spray sunscreen. Oh, because there's nano in that. That's how they get the titanium so small. Um, just just put it on. But it, it makes me wary of any inhaling anything, right? Like any of those weird smells or... Yes. You just really got to be careful. So there's your canoe update. Thank you. Actually, this is great. If you could just nudge me every two weeks and say, what's going on with that canoe, Eric? What's doing, Yeah, what's going on with that canoe? I'm surprised the camera operator doesn't say what's going on with that canoe in, our, in my garage. She did say the other day that the garage area was looking a little um, cluttered. <laughs> and then I noticed in the um, the blue hat video that um, there was a microwave back there. Did you ever finish that microwave? I gave up on the microwave. The blue hat uh, video is about uh, a deer fly right. uh, solution. And we'll link to it here in the show notes. <laughs> but the microwave... I couldn't, I'm not real good with um, electronics and I couldn't figure out with my multimeter whether it was the magnetron or the capacitor that was bad. And the capacitor was like, you know, $12 or something, but the magnetron was like $85. And I thought, you know, for $120, I could just have a brand new microphone. You can have a new one. Right, right, right. So I also... um, I got a little bit of cold feet because dealing with a capacitor in a microwave, it, it, it holds a lot of voltage. Oh. And if somewhere, someone to, were to hurt themselves, I don't think I have any liability, but I don't also don't want people to watch a video of mine and then hurt themselves. Yeah, no, no, that totally makes sense. So. Okay. Wow. We've like, we've like gone on forever here. I know people are probably at their destination 
but that but that we went anywhere. But we have plenty more to talk about because I um, we have barely touched on a couple of subjects that um, I want to talk about with you. So, all right. Well, I'm I'm free. I'm I'm willing and ready to be on your podcast. And you have a really nice <laughs> microphone. You you like what's it like to have your act together, Nicole? Oh God, this is all just a it's all a front, Eric. <laughs> this, this act is not together. <laughs> At least your toe isn't purple and broken. So. Oh God, that's the worst. Um, do you guys have the cicadas up there? No, not yet. I thought that they were supposed to be here, but um, then. Oh my then gosh, they, they are everywhere. I wonder if you'll be able to hear them in the audio. Um, they're very loud. No, I can't hear it. Yeah, it's fascinating. So. So real quick, even though you're going to come back on the show, where where can people find you if they want to find you? Oh sure, I um. The, the DC family biking, I, we are not, uh, we really don't really care where you live. Um, and we don't define family. <laughs> Anybody with a big bike like ours, we're happy to, happy to have, um, on Facebook. And then, um, you can see my photography at NicoleHarkin.com. I'm a family photographer. And then my writing is at NicoleHarkinWriting.com. Wow. Cool. Yeah. All right, everyone. Uh, Nicole and I are going to stick around for the after show for our patrons um, but let me know your thoughts. We always love to hear from you. It's radio at gardenfork.tv. All right. Thank you. Garden Fork Radio is produced by Garden Fork Media LLC in Brooklyn, New York. Our producer is Sean O'Neill. If you need an amazing podcast producer, visit Sean's site, seaninbrooklyn.com. That's Sean, S E A N, in Brooklyn.com. Our executive producer is Jimmy Goose. For more information about Jimmy and the custom hollow books he makes, visit hollowbooks.com. The music in the show is licensed from audioblocks.com and uniquetracks.com. Music.